Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today what we're going to be doing is changing out the shock on the CBF um, for this beautiful Hagon unit uh, with the remote adjuster. So not really much to say other than it's really pretty off the bat and uh, yeah let's get into it. So first and foremost what you want to do is remove your seats. Um, I don't know is this necessary strictly uh, but I'm going to do it anyway just so I have more access. I don't think you really need to do it, but it'll make sense in a few seconds. So the top seat comes away just with the key, and just take that away then you know, bend it, which I have done before. And then what you wanna do is remove the two five mil Allen bolts just in here. Now I have cracked these already for the purposes of the video, they are tighter than this. But just remove them, one at a time. And once they're removed, the seat just lifts up at the back, wiggle it out and lifts away. That hook there, sorry, that hook there just loops in under this bar and that's it. As a very quick aside, some of you know that this uh, bike comes with a, an adjustable seat. Uh, there are three areas for it. Now, I have tried adjusting this, so you can move it up, there's three holes and you move it up. But when you move it up to the max setting, the seat's really far away from the tank and it just looks crap, so I actually wouldn't advise it. It looks, it looks terrible, so just, just don't do it. Next what we're going to do is remove this bolt down here. Uh, the size is an 8mm Allen, so let's see if we space it in at this even. No, we're going to have to actually use an Allen. Ugh. Okay, just a quick walk through, a bit of a dickhead move from Honda. So what I've had to do is put together this contraption, like so. 8mm Allen, like I said, on that side. And then over here, you need a 17mm spanner, but there's no space for a spanner or a socket down there. Um, but it does work. It does work once you put it together. So, anyway, let's loosen this and open the bottom end. You can take that bolt off the rest of the way with your hand. Now, we're gonna leave that there for a second. That bolt will be able to just punch through, hopefully. Um, but what I'm gonna do next is take some load off the back wheel by just getting a piece of wood underneath it to just stop it sagging so much. Next, to get access to the top bolt, uh, we're just gonna open these side panels. And now, I have them good authority these can just turn down. By good authority, I mean I took them off earlier to see could they just turn down a bit to give us space. I'm sure some puritanical people are crying right now, but I don't care, because it works. So I'm going to open the other side and that should give us enough space hopefully to get in at the shock then. I just realised on the far side no point in upsetting the puritanicals. It's only a rubber pop grommet thing so they can just pop off. Same again then, you want the 8mm Allen and a 17 on the far side and yeah, <laughs> just open it up. I'm really hoping I can actually get the shock out <laughs> once I have these loosened. Ta da! Getting that out is a pain. Be careful, you could drop it easily. Okay, so next, I want to push through the two bolts. I'm going to push through the top one first and then the bottom one because it'll just take the slack off the bottom one. It might be easier to push through. Uh, just figured out how to push it through now is the next challenge. I'm going to use a really long Allen wrench. Allen key? Allen key. That worked. So what I'm going to do is start turning the bolt from one side and push it with the flat piece of the spanner on the other side and just see if I take it out. Which it is. So that's what I would recommend doing. Now for the incredibly difficult bit of figuring out how to move over the shock out. I think I may have to take the tank off to be honest. It uh, looks like I'm going to have to take off the back wheel to get out the shock. Uh, if you lift the tank, there's no space either. So we have to remove the back wheel and the back mudguard, at least enough to get some more space. Right, so the back wheel is off and still we don't have enough space because the gods of not pissing me off this weekend still hate me. 
So I'm going to have to take off the rear mudguard. Now the problem is some of the rear mudguard bolts seem to be in behind the rear um, foot peg hanger. If that is the case, then this bike's been set in fire and just not doing it. So we'll see how that works out. So here are the two bolts down here. One. And the other one, if you take out the wheel like I did, just about peeks out. That actually worked. Well, my life may not be over, or well, the life of the bike, I should say. Ta-da! That was really easy. Right, so now this wonderful shock installation that I'm enjoying so much. We're gonna get it in roughly in place. Which is much easier said than done because it, as it turns out this uh, remote adjustment thing, while it will definitely improve my life in the long run, is a bit of a pain in the ass. Oh my god, when you're trying to get things in place. So I'm going to do the bottom bolt first. So that's the first bolt just in place. I'm not going to tighten it up or anything yet because now I have a the definitely fun job of getting everything lifted back up and the top bolt in place. While we do the hula to get everything in place, and there's the top bolt in place. And this bike has ruined my life today. Uh, if I didn't like the CBF so much, I would set it on fire. So what I'm going to do now is tighten it all back up. And because the shock is now in place, the wheel should be okay to get back in. Um, that really wasn't an enjoyable experience though, so honestly, if you don't like working on your own bike, go to a mechanic. It's not even that it was really hard, it was just annoying. It's just annoying. I have to try to find somewhere to put this. I was kind of hoping it could go under the seat, but I don't know is that a runner, to be honest. It could probably go under the seat. Good news. Let's see. Let's see how that works out. If I pop off this fairing and run it up, it should work. So now I'm going to tighten up those bolts and put it all back together, I suppose. So just as a, a quick aside, and I hope the audio is okay here, what I did was I routed the cable from the adjustable uh, up here in behind this plastic and then it'll sit under the back seat right here. I'll probably eventually just make up a little bracket to bolt it on, but at the moment there's actually a clip there. So I think it's already made for it, which is pretty handy. Um, and then, you know, this just adjusts by twisting, which is really, really handy. And yeah, so I also had to adjust the chain. Everything's back together. I'm sorry I was so angry. <laughs> It happens sometimes. Not the not the shock's fault. I'm not. I wasn't mad at the shock. The shock is, is really nice. It fits really well. And I'll do a test ride on it uh, coming up soon. Just the the manner that I have to take everything apart. I've had a bad day, and I let that spill over onto the video for the first time I think ever. So sorry about that. Won't happen again. So what do I think? <laughs> the fitting actually isn't that bad. I know. I know I got a bit stressed during it, but uh, like I said earlier, having a bad day, uh, so I'll get through it. To be honest, if you attack this the right way, if you take off the rear wheel, take off the rear hugger and, and the side panels, seats, it's actually not that bad. It'll be a quick enough job, to be honest. Um, just make sure you tighten your chain afterwards, because obviously if you change your shock, it's, it's going to be different. Um, the only thing I would, I would say watch out for is the, one of the small bolts on the rear hugger. Um, it's a bit of a pain, so on screen now, uh, the, the, the left hand peg holder, whatever you want to call that, um, take out the two bigger bolts I'm indicating there and just move it out so it does flex out enough to give you a bit of room. Um, I would highly recommend doing that. It just makes everything easier to get that bolt back in because it's a bit of a nightmare. Other than that, it was okay um, to do, to be honest, once once I got over my, my little temper tantrums. <laughs> They happen sometimes. Anyone who works in a garage will tell you. Usually, usually I don't show them on video, but you know, it is what it is. It's having a bad day. Um, it is a lot springier, to be honest. When you sit down on the bike, it feels way better. And I can close the side stand and open it um, without like leaning the bike. And Motor Dragon actually had the same complaint, and he's a lot lighter than me, so I don't know is that other shock just dead and buried or what. But. Um, Really happy it's changed, and really happy where the remote adjuster and everything sits. So I'm gonna test it out. I prefer 
a stiffer suspension anyway so we'll see how it goes next up i am probably gonna do the springs and uh, go up a, a fluid level on the front and um, we'll see how that goes and yeah that's it really so if you've watched thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video found it found it helpful please do leave a like and maybe subscribe and if you really liked it maybe share the video as always very special thanks to my, to my, my subscribers my subscribers and also my patrons um, who helped me make the decision on the next modification for this bike which was that shock very happy i've done it and there will be a initial impressions ride video coming up soon it's quite late now so i'm not bothered doing it and uh, cameras don't look that good in the dark anyway so yeah until next time thank you very much for watching again adios outro crew it's back so this is the shed that has been donated by the well this half of it has been donated by essentially my biggest patron which is my dad <laughs> um he's in construction so he had this this was an absolute mess so i cleaned it out there's a kitty litter tray because there's a cat asleep over there we won't disturb her we'll try we'll try spot her Ooh, no, no. like i said over there's a mess is she there she's in her bed there she is Anyway, her name is Luna. So as you can see, uh, I have started working on the Suzuki again. Here's its brake calipers front and back. And <laughs> this is what's left of the fuel pump and strainer assembly. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So yeah, the Suzuki is back. I have a nice space to work on it now. I have an old used couch to sit on with my bum and the magnet and the CBF have their own spot, so I I could not be happier with this space. It is it is it's gonna enable me to do so much bike work. So yeah, and I really I know this has been sitting a long time, and I'm sorry for anyone who's waiting to see it. Trust me, there is no one more disappointed than me in that. So we're getting back to it. It'll be back on the road hopefully soon, and I can't wait to ride it. All right, bye.